Cybersecurity is hard. And no Sherlock. And people make it harder on themselves by doing the wrong things. But what's the right things to do? I think there's a widespread idea, an ill-conceived notion, if you will, that you can just study cybersecurity in college, or a book, or a tutorial, or an influencer course, or whatever the f else is out there, and walk into a job interview and wow them. So I push 99 to 100% in all of my runs. Part of the issue is an endless stream of videos showing how little actual work people with jobs in tech do without emphasizing the work part. They're just making coffee, and playing Monster Hunter and pretending they work out daily. Liars, you know who you are. It painted a picture of anyone can do it if they just study for a few months because they're not showing what they actually do. Let's put our hands together and throw this idea right out the window right now. You are not getting a six figure cybersecurity job in three months. Say it with me. Breathe, it's gonna be all right. There's light at the end of the tunnel. There's two problems that people face right now. Landing interviews like any, and landing jobs. Two vastly different issues. Let me address the second problem. Studying cybersecurity, but not actually learning how to do anything in cybersecurity. Basically, you're in learning purgatory. Get out of it. If all you're doing is mindlessly memorizing cybersecurity concepts and principles, and not applying that into hands to keyboard work, you might as well stop while you're ahead. If you ground yourself in this reality, you're less likely to be disappointed and pissed off. Reality is, you could get a job if you're very lucky and smart and interview well, like me, or, you know, network with the right people and have a job handed to you on a silver platter where they teach you how to do everything on the job. Mad Hat Discord is in the description, by the way. But for most people, it's not that easy. Those jobs like the one I got, where they literally hired an old teacher with no cybersecurity background to work the alert queue, those are hard to come by these days. I was very persistent, applied to over a thousand jobs, beat out three or so people in the fourth round of interviews because I knew my stuff more so than the rest. Can we all collectively agree how stupid four plus rounds of interviews are? Come on, what are we doing? Anyways, we're talking over 95% of the people that watch this video or any other video about landing a job in cybersecurity are not going to have it easy. It's not easy, but it's also not as hard as you might think it is. If you put in the necessary blood, sweat, and late night tears into doing actual cybersecurity work, not just reading and watching videos on it or paying for another boot camp. Don't get me wrong, watching a few guides can be helpful, but if that's all you do, what the f are you doing? Learning something new requires two things. Learning what the new thing is. You can't do something that you don't know exists, right? And no s Sherlock. A quick overview is all you need. Basics, fundamentals, now apply them. Do the thing over and over and over until it's burned into your brain and you have fever dreams about it. I've had nightmares about the work that I do. There's a vast difference between someone talking about what a reverse shell does and looks like versus someone who set one up on an endpoint in their home lab, puts in detection rules to find reverse shells in their sim. Who do you think is gonna stand out more in an interview? Who do you think is more knowledgeable and likely would sound better in an interview? Now I'm sure all of you are thinking, get to the point. That was the point. Do the thing you're learning about. All right, let's do it with an example. Hoax shell, a Windows pseudo reverse shell, payload generator and handle that abuses HTTP protocol to establish a reverse shell that kind of acts like a beacon, as you can see here. Bad guy send command, they computer do command, bad guy get output. Simple. You know what's not simple to most folks? Setting up the attack server, a victim machine, an open source sim onto a server, deploying an agent on the endpoint to send data into your sim where a curated detection rule generates alerts for hoax shell activity. And the headaches that you're probably going to get when running into various error messages will burn the experience into your brain. Effectively, you'll be learning the ins and outs of whatever it is you're trying to implement, more so than just reading about it. You'll learn about GET and POST requests to some extent, beaconing, and fundamentally the whole point of a reverse shell to be able to execute code remotely. A pretty powerful attack used by the bad guys and red teamers, and an attack method that blue teamers should be able to identify and spot. Now, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel by going through this project. It's been covered by this dude and this random dude, <laughs> but you get 
get the point. This project in particular might be overkill for entry level security analyst jobs. You're probably not going to be expected to set up a sim or curate some detection rules. <laughs> Your very first security analyst job, but I did at my first one. And I really just wanted to highlight how to go about learning cybersecurity. And heck, with AI the way it's going, you might very well need to know a lot more about this for your very first job. You could also set up ThreatLocker, the sponsor of this video. ThreatLocker is a zero trust endpoint protection platform. I'm sure most of you have heard of the idea of zero trust. Trust absolutely nothing by blocking everything and only allowing what is actually needed. ThreatLocker has taken this principle and made it a reality. Don't mind me as I geek over how awesome this security tool is compared to all the other security tools I've worked with. Where traditional endpoint protection aims at purely reactive measures, your typical detecting activity, automating some type of response, generating an alert for investigation, yada, yada, yada. But you got to the alert too late because you were digging through logs. ThreatLocker is proactive by creating a baseline of allowed applications, network control, storage control, and even more during the initial learning phase when it's deployed to your environment and every endpoint. Now, once it has the baseline, you can not only block applications outright from running, but also block approved applications from interacting with other applications, the network, storage, anything. The sky's the limit. Now think of PowerShell. Remember all those times upper management asked if you could block PowerShell? Kind of can. Those are apps we probably don't want other apps executing or using. In our example with Hulk Shell, say the payload command to initiate the beaconing via a PowerShell script is done from, I don't know, a document in an email. That happens all the time. Carl from accounting downloads the document, naturally, because Carl downloads everything and every attachment, and he tries to run it. Or no, or no. Or no. He just launched hoax shell on his endpoint. This was a few years ago, Microsoft Defender would have no way of knowing about this and it would have executed entirely uninterrupted. And now bad guy has their pseudo reverse shell. We can create a rule that prevents Outlook, Adobe, any office application from accessing and launching PowerShell through something called ring fencing. So Carl from accounting can open whatever he wants. It's not gonna work. ThreatLocker has made zero trust doable. And I think it's pretty sweet. Check out ThreatLocker in the link down below if you're interested in learning more about the latest and greatest in zero trust technology. Now, I've noticed a trend in the people interested in learning cybersecurity. They think someone can just point them to the right path and things that they can watch, read, certificates to obtain, and somehow that guarantees them a job. What are my chances? Not good. You mean not good like one out of a hundred? I'd say more like one out of a million. So you're telling me there's a chance. Yeah! It's not what you know, it's what you know how to do. So people asking if a bunch of entry-level certificates are enough to land a job are wildly confused individuals. That's it, get off YouTube, get off Discord, get off WoW and start a project or start doing actual hands to keyboard work on some learning platforms. Platforms where you actually learn how to perform investigations, submit your findings and build your knowledge. Learn about exploits and try to actually do the exploits on busted virtual machines. There's so many readily available learning sites, you really have no excuse. When I first started college back in the day, we didn't have try hack me and hack the bucks. That was an old joke because I'm old. I have read through all the comments. I've scoured through all the cesspools of confused people posting in discords and reddits about all the conflicting information that they're getting. I, I don't know what they're talking about. It's pretty straightforward to me. Let's get to the point or try to because people say I talk too much. Maybe it's because I never talk in real life and it's just bottled up inside. Maybe I just need a therapy. TLDR, you won't land a cybersecurity job by just watching a few videos or collecting some certs. You need hands-on practical experience actually doing the work. Be realistic, persistent, and patient. Breaking into cybersecurity takes time, effort, and consistent action. No lounging about here. There's no shortcuts or three-month crash courses. And if you find yourself losing motivation, watch one of my many videos and get back to work. You, you don't try to build a wall. You don't set out to build a wall. You don't say, I'm going to build the biggest, baddest, greatest wall that's ever been built. You don't start there. You say, I'm going to lay this brick yeah. as perfectly as a brick. <laughs>